Hey guys, in this video today, I'm going to reveal to you what is the most powerful financial force in the universe if you're not already rich. Now, you may have heard that quote before. It's a famous quote by some famous person, I forget who, but the person said that the most powerful force in the universe is compound interest. Now, I think that may be true if you're already rich and you already have a lot of money to invest and then you can get that compound interest and, and you, know, you can live pretty well right away. But if you don't have a whole bunch of money to invest right away, then that compound interest is going to take you a while to accumulate before you make any money. Uh, before you're really making very much money, that is. And so your time is a valuable asset and probably you don't want to wait um, that long, right? You you might be able to get rich when you're old, but you probably don't want to wait that long. And so because of that, I believe that for people that don't already have a lot, a lot of money, there is a much more powerful financial force that you can harness to, to your benefit. And that is asymmetrical risk return asymmetrical risk return. Now that sounds fancy, but really all it means is that you invest in something where the amount of money or, or the amount of value that you can gain from the investment is much larger than the amount of money or the amount of value that you can lose from the investment. So here's an easy example. Let's say that you invest in a brand new cryptocurrency. It costs a dollar. Right, so let's say that you would just buy one. You buy one of this new cryptocurrency and it costs a dollar. Well, the loss, the, the risk in that investment is uh, one dollar, right? The maximum that you could possibly lose is one dollar. So if the cryptocurrency goes to zero, you've lost your dollar, right? The return, um, it's, it's harder to say, but let's say Let's, let's take Bitcoin as an example. Bitcoin at its peak, uh, as of recording this video, it hit like $65,000 for one Bitcoin. So that's kind of the maximum uh, historical that a, crypto a single unit of cryptocurrency has ever gotten to. So for return, let's say $65,000. So what you're looking at is you could possibly lose $1 or you could possibly gain $65,000. So the return is much greater than the risk. That's what uh, asymmetrical risk return means. Now you also have to consider the probability, right? Because the, in the, this example with a cryptocurrency, the probability of losing your dollar is a heck of a lot higher than the probability of making $65,000. If you look at the historical data on all of the different cryptocurrencies that exist, um, the, the vast, vast majority of them failed. So, so you have to consider that too. Like, um, how many times would you have to invest a dollar in a new cryptocurrency before you hit that, that um, you know, you hit one that actually made it. And so, you know, you do have to consider the probability. But let's say, just, just for the sake of argument, let's say hypothetically that these two were 50-50, right? That you had a 50% chance of losing your dollar and a 50% chance of making some significant return. Well, the significant return is a lot more than the dollar. And so given that, that opportunity, it would be a great investment because of that asymmetrical risk reward. Now I should mention also that asymmetrical risk return works in reverse too. So uh, my favorite example of this is street racing. Let's say that you're, you're on the highway and the guy beside you starts looking at you and revving his engine like he wants to race you, right? So you have the, you have the, the choice between, okay, I'm gonna race this guy or I'm, not going to, or I'm not going to. So let's look at the risk return on that. The risk is, or the return is that uh, like a, a momentary feeling of pride right? That maybe you beat him in the race and you feel like a macho man. Whereas the risk is you die, <laughs> right? So, so which of these is, is more significant? The risk of losing your life or the possible return of, of feeling a little bit of pride for a moment, right? Obviously the risk is much, much, much greater than the return. And the same is true with like getting in a fight with somebody at a bar right? Like if you win the fight, then you feel good about yourself for a moment. If you lose, then who knows, you end up in the hospital, right? So, so there's all these situations that have an asymmetrical risk reward that can be 
positive where the, the return is much greater than the risk, or they can be negative where the risk is much greater than the return. The negative ones, obviously, you want to avoid always, right? So don't ever street race, don't ever get in fights at bars, <laughs> and, and uh, your life will be a lot better as a result, statistically speaking. Whereas the opposite is true if you invest in uh, asymmetrical risk return where the return is much greater than the risk. The more you do it, the better your life becomes, statistically speaking. Now, the biggest mistake that people make when considering these kind of investments, um, you know, apart from doing stupid stuff like street racing, uh, apart from that, the biggest mistake that people make is that they think of, they, they consider a price of an investment in terms of how much money they have now instead of in terms of how much money that investment could make them. So for example, I just invested in a $15,000 coaching program. Now, from where I am now, $15,000 seems like a lot of money, right? That's a lot of money compared to the amount of money that I have now. However, if, if this program goes well and I get what I expect to get out of it, and I think there's a high probability that I will, then I can make a million dollars from this easily. Right, so compared to a million dollars, 15,000 seems like very little, but compared to you know, what I have in my bank account right now, $15,000 seems like quite a lot. So I'm in the situation where essentially I'm risking $15,000 and the possible return is $1 million, right? So this is, by this, um, by this metric, a very good investment because the potential return is much, much, much greater than the potential risk. And because I have the reference knowledge and I know that this is something that people have done successfully, then I can be pretty confident that I can also do it successfully. So, so the probability of success is pretty high. So let's take a hypothetical here. Now, again, I, I'm pretty confident that this is gonna work, but let's just be conservative and let's say that this only has a 25% chance of working, right? It's a one in four chance that this will work. So what happens if I, um, if I lose, right? What happens 75% chance that it doesn't work? Then my risk is that I lose my $15,000. Or, you know, if I, if I went into debt, that means that it's $15,000 that I have to pay back, right? That's my risk. Let's say, um, for the sake of our example here, let's say that it will take me a year to bounce back from that. Like, it'll take me a year to gain $15,000 or it'll take me to, a year to pay back the $15,000 that I borrowed. Let's say that I go and do exactly the same thing next year. I try some, some other coaching program that also cost me $15,000. Right? And now I'm in exactly the situation again, right? Could make $15,000, or could, could lose $15,000, could make a million dollars. And let's say that fails. Let's say that I go through this four, four times. Okay, so I go through this process four times. Sorry for my bad writing down here. Now, because it was, it, it's a 25% chance of success each time, so, my, um, I, I'm basically virtually guaranteed success since I've done it four times and it was a 25% chance of success each time. So basically I've paid, uh, this is what, $60,000, right? I paid $60,000 in, in the, over a space of four years and I made a million dollars. What does the, uh, the risk return look on that, right? $60,000 to make $1 million. Well, that's like, I don't know the math, it's like 13, 14 times my investment that I've made back, right? That is still a hugely uh, asymmetrical risk return. And if I'm willing to have the, the patience to keep at it long enough until it works, then the return is much, much, much greater than the risk. So I'll summarize that as $60,000 risk, $1 million return. And at this point, I'm virtually guaranteed of getting the return because of how the, the probability works, you know, 25% times four. Now, let, let's make this even more unfavorable. Let's say that I borrowed all of that $60,000. I didn't have a penny of it. And let's say that I got a really, really horrible interest rate. Let's say that my, my interest rate was 100%. 
right? If you look at, you know, most credit cards are, are like 20 to 30%, but let's, let's make this really dramatic and say that I have an interest rate of 100%. Well, that would double the amount of money that I have to pay back, right? And, and again, probably somebody's gonna get on me because my math is a little bit off, but this is, it's close, right? So let's say that I, because of my absolutely horrible interest rate, um, I double that amount of money that I have to pay back to the credit card companies and I end up having to pay $120,000. Well, how does that compare to 1 million? It's still a huge uh, asymmetrical risk reward because a million dollars is a heck of a lot more than 120,000, right? Is it worth to pay 120,000 in, in order to make a million, right? Pretty much anybody would take that trade. So even with a horribly high interest rate, there's basically no way that I can lose in this scenario unless, unless one of two things happens. Number one is I get discouraged easily and I give up too early, right? So we're looking at a four year period here. I try three different things that don't work before the one thing that does work. If I was to have gotten discouraged during that period, uh, then I would never get to the point where I have the one that works and so it wouldn't work for me. And then the other, the other reason, the other uh, possible downfall here is that I'm scared to invest in the first place, right? I'm scared to invest because that $15,000 looks like a lot compared to the money that I have in the bank now, rather than compared to the potential return, which is what really matters here. And in my opinion, the best possible investment that you can make with this asymmetrical risk return when you are not already rich is in income producing skills, right? You invest in your skills and in your knowledge that are going to reliably bring income to you in the future. And the reason that I think that this is the best investment that you can possibly make is that it's disproportional returns, right? The return is a lot greater than the risk and the return is pretty fast, right? You can, you can double your investment uh, in a very short time. You can double your investment or triple or quadruple your investment within a year, or within two years, right? You can't possibly do that investing in, in something with compound interest. You can't do that investing in the stock market or, you know, God forbid, investing in, in the banks or the bonds or something. So it gives you these highly disproportionate returns. And then secondly is that it's a very high probability of success. If you were following a model that other people have done and it has worked, right? Like you're investing in, let's say you invest in, in medical school, right? Well, that's a pretty safe investment. If you go to medical school, you become a doctor and you work as a doctor, well, it's pretty clear what kind of salary you're going to make. There's not a lot of risk there. Your probability of success is very high. Same idea if you learn to code, right? If you, if you learn to code and you start working as a computer programmer or in IT, right? You have an idea of what the salary range is. So let's say that you're making $50,000 a year now and you are, are aiming towards a coding job that makes $100,000 a year. Well, if you take a, let's say a coding boot camp that, that costs $10,000, well, you're paying $10,000 to make a $50,000 jump in your salary, right? So you're already getting a five times return just the first year. And then you continue making that return year over year over year over year. So really it's a no brainer. If you can be confident that that skill set will pay off. And there's other things to consider, like is this job gonna be around in, in a year or five years or 10 years, right? There are some jobs that go the way of the dodo bird, but generally speaking, you can look at other people that have gained the same skill in the past. And if they're making money from using that skill, then chances are very, very good that you can do the same thing, right? So if you compare this to my earlier example about the new cryptocurrency, well, a new cryptocurrency has a like 1% chance of making it. Whereas somebody who goes to medical school or learns to code has, I don't know what the numbers are, but a much, much higher chance of making it. So with investing in your own knowledge and your own high income skills, then you, you have a, that same disproportionate uh, risk and return, but you also have a much higher probability of success. For me personally, I've invested over $50,000 in online courses and coaching from people that, uh, that have had success and know what they're doing, 
right? And, and so this doesn't include college, right? Because college is taught by people who have not had success and don't know what they're doing most of the time. But apart from the amount of money that I wasted on college, I spent $50,000 on courses in coaching. And guess what? I've made a lot more than $50,000 return on that investment and I'm only just getting started. So far, I've invested more into courses and coaching than any other thing ever in my life. That's, that's been my biggest ever investment, and so far the returns have been really excellent. And not on all of it, by the way, right? Not every course and coaching program has gotten me a return. Some of them have sucked. Some of them have not been worth it. However, Again, it was like those, those uh, four times $15,000 and eventually it works. Well, that's what I've done. And, and it's been more than 25%. The majority of coaching programs that I've invested in have definitely been worth the money. So I hope that's helpful. That's certainly what uh, brought me from the point of having no money to being moderately successful. So I hope you enjoyed this. If so, I'd appreciate you hit the thumbs up or the like button on whatever platform you are. Uh, give me a subscribe or a follow, share this with anybody who might be interested, leave any comments. And then if you're interested in learning high income skills, I highly recommend you check out this video all about what are the best high income skills to learn in 2022 and even better how to assess them going forward.